Sleepy Hollow Season 2, Episode 14, Kali Yuga. I enjoyed this episode. I was definitely curious to see what we were going to get, what sort of story we'd get out of Holly and sort of his backstory. And we got a little bit. It wasn't really um, heavy-handed or it, it wasn't really a lot at all, actually. We got like a little detail out of Jenny when she mentioned that his parents died when he was young. And the woman that he ends up working with in this episode was actually his godmother. And that's really about it. And I mean... I guess that's all there is to it, like his parents died, he went to her, and then she was like, you know, the female Indiana Jones type, and unfortunately one day he saw him, or he saw her kill a guy, and he noticed that she basically did it professionally, like it wasn't the first time she'd done it, and that's why he left her, they freaked him out, and she wasn't exactly the person he thought, and so he took off and started to kind of do his own thing, and I enjoyed this episode, I really liked the fact that we got a couple of cool things out of him, and we got some moments out of Abby and Ichabod that were definitely pretty cool. We also got Irving, <clears throat> like a big part of his storyline out of this episode as well. Some, like, two big reveals towards the end of the episode that were really nice, like some nice little touches that ultimately, of course, just leave me wondering, like, it, what? Is he a vampire? Is he, like, he can't be a ghost because everyone's seeing him and stuff. Is he a vampire? And just all weird sorts of things. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with his character still. It seems like it's at least a little bit good. I mean, the beginning of the episode, he gets out and it's like, sweet. Like, he's free. He got some justice. He's, you know, things are looking up. He finally gets, like, a happy note in his storyline. And then he kind of has issues. Like, his wife is unsure. Like, she has to be 100% certain because she doesn't want herself or her daughter put in any sort of crazy danger like they've been in before. So they go to Katrina. And it was good to see Katrina in this episode because they mentioned her a lot. And we didn't get to see her, like, at all until the very end. I thought she wasn't even going to be in it, I honestly. Had, um, forgotten about, like, Irving and his wife going to her until they showed her at the end of the episode. And I was like, oh, yeah, because there was, like, a huge chunk, um, of, like, the main story taking place towards the end of the episode. So, I kind of already, I had completely forgotten about Irving with all, like, the twists and stuff like that. And them fighting these crazy monsters that were kind of a lot like vampires. They had, like, the super speed and stuff like that. But... I enjoyed the ending scene, and she, like, she, the big reveal at first was just that she said, like, the fact that you're here means my son is alive, and I thought she was, when she gave him, like, the, um, whatever she gave him, a little potion, I thought it was going to be to kind of entice some sort of mystical state out of him, and she would find answers that he didn't even know he knew, but fortunately it was a bit simpler than that, and it was just like, there's no influence on your soul, um, Maybe the fact that he's invisible means he hasn't, um, he doesn't have a soul anymore or something like that. I don't know, but I thought that was pretty cool. And she didn't seem too happy about that. Like, it was good for him and his wife because it's like, you're you, so that's great. And she was a little upset because, of course, finding out that her son had zero influence on his soul meant that he's really done and gone. Like, there is no possible return for my son, who especially, it has to be especially hard for her and Ichabod, considering the fact that he died finally turning on, like, their main enemy. He destroyed Malik, and he sacrificed himself to save his parents in the end, and that's when he vanishes. Like, the entire time he was alive, aside from when he was tricking Abby and Ichabod, he was a villain. He was like, I kind of basically hate you for being crappy parents, and I'm going to help Malik rise so he can destroy the world, including the both of you. And then when he decides that Molly doesn't really care for him, like his parents still do, despite the fact that he's trying to kill them for like the whole season, he, you know, he vanishes. Like that's it. He basically sacrifices himself and then he's gone. So it was an interesting, really small moment. It was oddly one of my favorite parts. And it was like the only scene that Katrina was in. And it was just a great little moment. It was specifically when they just showed her standing by herself and she was kind of um, like messing with her hand. And it was just a great little scene. It was like she's, you can tell that she's upset. And it's like, it's sort of an in-between because she, of course, wants this guy who was tricked into giving his soul away to the enemy. She wants him to be okay, but she also wants her son to be out there somewhere. Because if he's somewhere in some sort of form, she could find a spell that will bring him back to, you know, his normal state. So it was just really interesting to see that. And they'll probably touch on that in the next episode. But I enjoyed that little moment, and, you know, the stuff with Irving, like I said, I don't really know it's possible that it's because he has no soul anymore. Um, I feel like she'd be able to know 
that he didn't, so maybe that's not the case. Like, I don't, I really don't, I'm just, you know, I saw it, he has no reflection, his wife does. Just random speculations coming out of my head, so I'm not 100% sure what's going on with him. Definitely excited, though, I mean, all in all, I'd say this was a good episode for him, considering all the other crap that's happened, I mean, dies in one episode, I guess him coming back was a really good point. And then, you know, he gets freed in this episode, he finds out that Henry has no control over him, and we get the reveal that he has no reflection. So, you know, all in all, I'd say it's an up episode for him, but there is that mystery towards the end. What does him having no reflection truly mean for his character in the future? Like, is he immortal now? Like, what's happening? So... I can't wait to see how that plays out, and I'm glad that he's going to have a big role because they're fighting some sort of undead whatever in the next episode, so Abby kind of went to him because he's kind of undead at the point, at, um, at this point in the series, so hopefully we get a little bit more story and a little bit more exposition on what's going on with him um, externally as well as internally because he obviously knows he has no reflection, so I'd like to see how that works on him mentally as well as kind of being alive and trying to figure out how to go about things at this point and after all the crazy stuff that's happened to him losing his job almost losing his family actually losing his soul and his life and then coming back and kind of having to just figure it all out but i definitely enjoyed that um you know obviously the smallest portion of the episode but a lot of great stuff in this one um the abby and ichabod stuff with them not really being on the same level of things I didn't actually notice that in the last episode, and I guess maybe I wasn't paying attention, maybe it wasn't really out there in the forefront, but honestly, I didn't think that that was as much of an issue anymore. Like, it seemed like it was in that episode when they were dealing with um, the Headless Horseman, but after that, it seemed like it really was over, and I guess that was kind of the point, was to make it seem like, you know, they dealt with it, and then in this episode, they show even how the characters are kind of like, yeah, it's over. But they actually realize in this episode it's not over. They're kind of going their separate ways a little bit and doing things in you know a, a pretty different way and they're not exactly communicating the way they typically would. So it was cool to see them do that. Um, I love the fact that that led to Ichabod thinking he knew the answer and it was like, you know, he goes through like his whole history lesson and it's like they're forged in iron and he hits the button and it's like, Oh my, and then they're almost killed. I thought that was a pretty funny scene. And then, of course, they escape, and, you know, the episode goes through. They fight the demons. Um, I enjoyed that. I thought it was pretty cool. Holly leaving the series, I thought was pretty interesting as well. I wasn't expecting that. I, of course, thought they're going to, you know, defeat the monster, kill the monster, and then, poof, you know, Holly has to have, like, an emotional development in the series. And I guess technically he still does. They had the stuff with him and Jenny, which was good. They officially established that of course it being a tv series it's like yeah we established it and then i just got to go off and be gone from the series for you know who knows how long but i'm excited for him to come back i'm sure it won't be this season i kind of feel like if it is this season it'll definitely be towards the end so that he can come back for like the season finale maybe like the last two or last three episodes so that he can be a part of the team and help out with whatever ends up being the main issue but I'm excited to see where they go with this character um, when he actually does return because he took off to uh, take down his godmother. So, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Like, I enjoyed the little storyline that developed between him and Jenny, and they kind of, like I said, they officially established it. They actually give a crap about each other, and that'll continue once he comes back into the series. But it was really cool. We got to see he has, like, the brand new Mustang, which I thought was kind of funny. It was like he... Uh, pulls up in the car when they first show and I'm like of course he drives a red Mustang it was just like naturally like this, the you know treasure hunter guy he just drives a red Mustang like naturally but I did enjoy the fact that um Ichabod drove the car I thought that was really cool that was a nice silly little scene of him talking about the different horses and stuff like that I thought that was a nice funny little scene and they kept showing the car just it was an obvious endorsement for the Mustang Ford you know helping out the show a little bit but it was a cool car that was it. it um, like I said, it didn't surprise me. It was like, you know, just the treasure hunter guy who comes in and always has a weapon, never has any issues, just like the funny bounty hunter type of character, typically has a cool, you know, a really cool car. So that was like a funny little thing they just threw in, like, 
yeah, obviously. So, enjoyed the episode. I'm excited for the next one. I think, I think it'll be a really good episode for Katrina in next week's episode because the villain is like this guy who started the Salem witch trials. So I'm really excited for that. His powers seem like witch powers, so he might have warped into a warlock or something, or maybe you've been a warlock the entire time and for whatever reason he was trying to kill off all witches and you know maybe there's some weird thing about taking witches power and he grew stronger i don't know but i'm definitely excited for that because it's it seems like it's really going to tie in a lot with katrina and of course with irving coming in as this sort of undead expert i think we're going to get a lot of cool storylines out of both of them and we might get some cool scenes with them together again like we had in this episode where katrina maybe takes some um extra stuff that she doesn't necessarily need to take but she will take them to get some of her own answers whether Irving you know gives her permission or not but I'm excited for that but of course I want to know what you guys thought about this episode so please comment below let me know your favorite parts least favorite parts and what you guys think about Polly's sort of backstory in this episode it wasn't a lot but what you guys think about at least the little bit of development we got out of this episode and what it could mean for his character in the future because this could possibly lead to like a whole you know it could actually lead to the crazy cult that the woman mentioned in the episode and of course by the end she was with a couple of other people who had already been turned so you know what do you guys think of that bit of development and how it could possibly in, impact the series later on like i don't think it'll become like you know they'll be the main threat or anything like that but i think they could come back and maybe for an episode maybe like a two-part thing this you know we get to see like this actual cult and maybe a lot more out of the um you know the demons themselves and sort of a hierarchy or something like that because i don't think we've had that in this series yet outside of Malik being like the big demon out of you know all the other demons i don't think we've really had sort of a clan or group or anything like that out of any of the monsters that the team has really gone up against so what do you guys think about that please comment below let me know and thanks for watching